Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I'm Mike Castronovo, your Music City Mortgage Coach. And today I wanted to talk to you about using temporary buy downs as a home purchasing strategy to help save you a ton of money. So for realtors, you're going to want to pay real close attention to this because it could help improve your business dramatically in the coming year. And for home buyers, I'm going to show you how to save a whole lot of money fast. Temporary buy downs are basically a way to dramatically reduce your interest rate in the first one to three years of owning your new home. They're ideal for when interest rates are high and expected to come down over the next one one, two, or three years. They're also great for move-up home buyers who want to sort of ease into that higher mortgage payment for the first couple of years. And they're really good for people who are in jobs where they know that their income is going to be increasing over the next one, two, or three years. And again, they want that mortgage payment to start out lower today. Now, these are available for conventional conforming loans, which the limit for 2023 is now up to $726,200 nationally. And then in high cost areas, such as Williamson County and Tennessee, you can go all the way up to $890,100 for your loan amount. That means if you're putting 20% down, you can basically buy a $1.12 million home and use this strategy. Now, for the example in this video, I'm going to use a $500,000 purchase price. So basically, if you're at a million dollars, just kind of double the numbers. If you're at $250,000, cut those numbers in half. So we're going to use $500,000 with 20% down. That means a $400,000 loan amount. Now, on buy downs, there are multiple options available, but the standard one that people typically will gravitate towards is what's called a 2 1 buy down. That means, let's say today's interest rate is 6%. You're going to start out at a rate that's 2% below that in the first year. So your rate's going to be 4% in year one. Year two, it's going to be 1% below. So it goes back up to 5%. And then in years three through 30, if you kept the loan for the entire 30 years, it would go back up to 6%. So you get that 2% buy down the first year, 1% buy down the second year, back to today's normal rate starting in year three. However, before it gets back up to that 6% rate, we're probably going to look to do a no-cost refinance to help bring down that rate permanently for you. But the worst case scenario is, is that you end up with today's rate, but you don't get up to that rate until year three, and sometimes even year four. Now, this is a seller paid expense. And on that $500,000 home with 20% down, the cost to the seller is going to be about $8,900. And that's the credit that we're going to be looking to get from the seller. Now, today, many sellers are already looking to give purchase incentives. And you may be asking, well, if the seller will give me that $8,900 credit, why don't I just ask them to reduce the price by $8,900? So instead of paying $500,000, I'm going to pay $491,100. And that's a great question. And let me show you why. Now, realtors pay close attention here because you can use this on any home you're purchasing. You start by negotiating your best home purchase price. So let's say on that $500,000 home, for sake of this example, you're able to negotiate it down to 491100 which is $8,900 lower than the offered price. If the buyer is putting 20% down, instead of a $400,000 mortgage, it would only be $392,880. The monthly savings and payment would be $40 a month. On that $400,000 mortgage, you pay $2,398 at 6%, and at $392,880, the lower purchase price with 20% down, you'd pay $23.55. So you get a $40 a month savings. Now compare that to negotiating the price down to the same level, but then coming back to the seller and saying, we'd like to change the contract price to $500,000 with an $8,900 seller closing cost credit. The seller gets the same bottom line number, so it really doesn't matter to the seller. But instead of $40 a month in savings to the buyer, they save $491 a month for the first year, and they save $252 a month in year two. Now, by year three, odds are high that you're going to refinance that home as rates come down. And I'm going to put a link in the description box below that goes into the reasoning why that's going to happen. And that same video also talks about why home prices are going to continue to go up. Again, I'm using Williamson County, Tennessee, where I'm located as an example. We've seen some very high price appreciation over the past several years, but we're going to use the historical average for the next 10 years, which has only been 3.87%. This means that a $500,000 home is expected to be worth approximately $519,000 after the first year, $560,000 by the third year, and $604,000 by year five and 730,000 by year 10. 
This means if you're putting down 20% in the first two years of the buy down, your return on your down payment is approximately 35.45%. Now let's say you sold after five years. Based on the lower initial purchase price, your net gain on the sale was 113,000 versus paying 500,000 and receiving the buy down, your net gain at the time of sale is gonna be 104,000. So in other words, you can make about $8,900 more on the sale of your home after five years, or you could save that same $8,900 in the first two years of owning your home. As I said, the 2-1 buy-down is only one of many buy-down options, plus there may be other options even more suited to your unique situation. The point of this video is to give you a high-level overview of what's possible, but my best recommendation is always to reach out to discuss your scenario so I can help you find the best strategy for you. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below, and if you know anyone who's looking to purchase a home anywhere in the U.S., please send them a link to this video. Make it a great day, and I look forward to seeing you next time.